Welcome back, Guardians. In today's Destiny 2 lore episode, we're going to explain what exactly is happening on Titan, which involves those strange hive pods, Sabathun, and the giant beast in the depths of Titan. Once again, thank you for your support over on Patreon. Gamma Trap has produced some more phone wallpapers. Amanda Holiday will be uploaded very shortly and available to Patreons. She'll be added to the collection of digital artwork and 3D phone wallpapers. All donations go towards paying for the artwork and video comic book. I do not take any of it. This is Mylan Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. To really understand what is inside these hive pods, you need to understand why the hive are on Titan. But if you're anything like me, you probably didn't really understand why we were sent to Titan in the first place, apart from trying to retrieve Zavala. So let's start there. The basic premise is that Zavala went to Titan to try and build a resistance to strike back at the Cabal. Even though this is stated in the very first mission, I must not have read that first description when I was playing the campaign for the first time. Sloane also summarizes the importance of Titan in preparing a fleet, arming guardians, and specifically decrypting Red Legion transmissions. She says, Commander, if I may. Guardian, this is Deputy Commander Sloane. We have a counter-offensive to plan. To do that, we need to get this station up and running. There's a fleet to prep, guardians to arm, and a trove of intercepted Red Legion transmissions to decrypt. It's critical we gain access to the station's control center. That's where you come in. If the light really is with you, send the hive back to hell. Decrypting Red Legion transmissions actually becomes a central mission for being on Titan. In fact, it is the reason for why Guardians are sent into the Arcology. We are tasked with retrieving a Golden Age CPU, which is predicted to provide enough power to decrypt Cabal transmissions. Although it's not explicitly said, I imagine this is why Zavala came to Titan. Zavala realized that Titan was a previous Golden Age colony and may contain technology to win the war. Many scannables reference what Titan was like during the Golden Age, including numerous marketing campaigns to entice colonists to the moon of Saturn. Screen's dead, but the feed's still running. Ooh, kind of a catchy jingle. New Pacific Arcology, the next frontier is you. The screen is broken, but the data flow is intact. It's streaming some kind of commercial, talking about all the wonders of living on the new frontier of humanity. Yeah. So, Zavala comes to Titan, hoping to salvage any Golden Age relics and formulate a plan to defeat Gaul. But little did he know that the Hive had already infested the planet. So, what are the Hive doing on Titan? Well, essentially the Hive on Titan are doing the exact same thing as what the Hive did on the moon in Destiny 1. They are building an army and trying to summon their Hive god, most likely Sabathun, Oryx's sister. If you remember back to Destiny 1, in our dimension, the moon had a summoning crystal, and the same crystal existed in Crota's throne world. For whatever reason, Crota needed to be summoned from his throne world to our dimension. It is never really explained why Crota could not just enter our dimension and needed to be summoned, but essentially the Hive were breeding an army on the moon and then Crota was to be summoned to the moon to then invade Earth. Obviously, we interrupt the summoning ritual in the Dark Below campaign by destroying the crystal, and then we head into Crota's throne world during the Crota's end raid, defeating Crota once and for all. For those who are unfamiliar with the Books of Sorrow, to truly defeat the Hive Gods, you must kill them in their throne worlds. Oryx and his sisters, Sabathun and Zyphri Arath, each created their own throne worlds, essentially other dimensions that protected them from dying. So, like the moon, I believe the exact same thing is occurring on Titan. The Hive are building an army and they are trying to summon Savathun from her throne world into our dimension. 
The strike mission Sabathun Song is the main evidence for this, where we literally stop a summoning ritual by the hive. I'm looking at a hell of a summoning ritual. Biggest shrieker I've seen in all my lives. Mark my words, something real mean and real old is gonna use that thing to lay eyes on this planet. Considering there are multiple Hive enemies that reference Sabathun, and multiple Scannables that reference Sabathun, and the name of the strike mission is Sabathun's Song, it is heavily implied that the Hive are trying to summon Sabathun to our dimension. Furthermore, there is a scannable that reinforces the idea of crystals being teleport links between our dimension and the Hive throne world. Have a listen. It seems like these floating stones mark places where the Hive have weakened the line between our world and theirs. Bet all the weird magic they have out here comes from sources like this. I think you can say with a high level of confidence that the Hive are trying to summon Sabathun from her throne world to our dimension. And like the moon, the Hive already on Titan are building and establishing Sabathun's army. Now here is where it gets really interesting, and the Hive do something that we have not quite seen before. They have two components for breeding the Hive. The first component is the Hive bodies themselves, and the second component is the worm inside the Hive. Most of you likely know by now, but just in case you don't, the Hive have a worm inside of them. Oryx formed a symbiotic pact with the Worm Gods on the planet The Fundament. Oryx struck a bargain with the Worm Gods, who are agents of the darkness, similar to how the Traveler is an agent of the light. The pact with the Worms required the Hive to keep killing, death fed their Worms, and in turn granted them more power. However, if the Hive failed to feed their worms through killing, their worm would consume them. So, I believe that the yellow sacks on Titan contain the physical bodies of the Hive being bred. This is reinforced in the first Titan mission called Hope. In that mission, we have to clear out the Hive breeding ground by destroying the yellow sacks. The second component to create the Hive is the worm. It appears that the hive are breeding the worms as well. Have a listen. It's a cocoon of some kind. The life inside it isn't hive exactly. This could be how the hive's symbiont worms grow. Now this is interesting for multiple reasons. In the books of Sorry, Oryx was given the worm larvae from the worm gods, and even though we saw the worms on the Dreadnought, I don't believe we have seen the Hive breed the worms themselves. In fact, this is what Oryx discovered, is that he could never truly become powerful because he was given the worms, and the sword logic demands that they take what they need. It was this realization that led Oryx to kill one of the worm gods, Akka, which then gave Oryx the power to become the Taken King. So instantly, I think, Sabathun is a sister of trickery and cunning. She's breeding the worms. If she has the ability to breed the worms, rather than just receiving the worm larvae from the worm gods, would she not breed them so that they would no longer harm the hive, while still granting them power? So this is what I'm speculating. The Hive are exactly doing this. They are breeding a different version of worms on Titan. And we can see this evolution and experimentation through the scannable cocoons on Titan, as the Hive perfect the breeding technique. Have a listen. These Hive spawn pods are different from the ones we saw before. Maybe a different brood or a different generation. Gross and confusing. As you can see, this cocoon looks different from the first worm scannable. Is this the first stage of upgrading the worms? We can then go on to find another cocoon that reads. Yet another strain of hive. They're doing an awful lot of testing out here. Trying new things with magic and... Ugh, breeding. 
This to me confirms my theory. The hive are experimenting with breeding and I think they are specifically experimenting with breeding the hive worms. Lastly, we can see what I believe to be the final form of the experiment. A very advanced looking cocoon with the rune etched on the side. Have a listen. We saw this rune before on the dreadnought. It means either doorway or treasure or chamber. Perhaps the hive used this rune to tap into their throne world dimensions. Could this be the final worm experiment? That the hive created this cocoon and using their magic connected the cocoon to their throne world, changing the very nature of the worms, allowing the hive to breed the worms to grant them power, but without any of the drawbacks. Of course, this is complete speculation. However, I do believe it is reasonable that this ruined cocoon contains the worms because these pods are often consistently positioned next to live worms, almost as if they have hatched. Furthermore, we see Titan hollowed out by hive tunnels filled with yellow sacs and these strange pods, which once again indicates to me that this is the final stage of the worm experiment their breeding grounds are full of these yellow sacs and strange pods. I think at the very least, there is enough evidence in scannables to suggest that the hive are experimenting with breeding the worms. From my point of view, the idea of hive creating a synthetic worm on Titan makes sense, because Sabathun is the sister of cunning and trickery, and in addition, she was in possession of the Vex mind, Korea Blade Transform and this Vex mind was trying to simulate the hive worms. So I wonder if this Vex mind was used in some way in the process of this experimentation and breeding of the worms. So if you believe this theory, then this is where things get really scary, because in the depths of the arcology lurks what I believe to be a massive hive worm. I think this is supported not only by the appearance of the creature, but also because we know the hive are experimenting with worms and they're breeding on Titan. So if this is an experimentation, a worm, who is the most likely candidate? That's right. I can't imagine this worm going to anyone other than a hive god. What other hive entity would be large enough to receive this synthetic worm? Has Savathun created a giant worm to replace her own and free her from the worm bargain? Let's hope we prevent Savathun from ever being summoned to our dimension. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel, leave the word worm to symbolize the new breed of worms on Titan. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.